what's up guys it is Darren from fight wave and today i'm joined by someone guys who probably across the entire australian regional circuit is one of the people i'm most excited to speak to and he's headlining in my opinion the biggest event that australian mma has seen all year long with a bombshell announcement last night which we'll get into in a bit but more importantly, this is one of the most important fights in Australian mixed martial arts history as it is going to identify the number one bantamweight across the entire country in a title unification bout unlike any other that the region has ever seen before. And today's guest is somebody who, in my opinion, has got one of the brightest futures across all of Australian mixed martial arts at only the age of 25. The experience that this guy has, this young gentleman has, is probably some of the best you'll see across any talent nationwide, worldwide, international, doesn't matter. He has wins over Roger Shippen and Jarrett Wilbraham, and the Roger Shippen finish is probably one of the best I've seen on the regional circuit. Today, I'm joined by Cody Haddon, who will be facing Sean Gauchi on November 18th at Hex Fight Series 28. How are we doing today, Cody? Good, man. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for getting me on. Yeah, can't wait. Absolutely, Cody, and thank you so much for your time. First and foremost, I know you're busy amidst one of the most important fights of your career against Sean Gauchi, a fight that fans have hailed as one of the best fights of the year in Australian MMA and overall just MMA in general. It's one of those fights where if you're a guy who watches something outside of the UFC, you watch the promotions outside of the UFC, you know just how special this fight is. Talk to me about obviously how you're feeling and how everything's been in the buildup for what is the biggest fight of your career thus far. Yeah, man. Um... Yeah, I feel ready. I can't wait. Um, yeah, we were meant to fight at the start of the year. Um, that fell through due to an injury I had. Um, but yeah, now injury free and feeling really good, man. I can't wait for the fight. Um, yeah, like you said, uh, you know, this fight probably is the biggest in in Australian MMA at the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, two champs, like I'm interim champ. He's the official champ going at it. And we're both at that point in our career where you know, this fight could very well lead to something bigger for both of us. So it is one of those fights. There's a lot of risk, but without risk, um, you know, no risk, no reward. So, yeah, I'm super ready, man. I can't wait. Absolutely. And on top of that, you know, not just the only amazing fight on the card. Just 24 hours ago, we got announced a bombshell announcement that Joseph Luciano versus Jonathan Mikhailov is going to be on that card as well. And in my opinion... It just adds to a level of excitement. I think Australian mixed martial arts fight fans have been wanting to see from the region in such a long time. Just a card that encompasses all of the, you know, amazing aspects, amazing fighters within the region. Talk to me about just seeing that fight announced and how you feel it adds to what is an amazing card that is headlined by yourself. Yeah, man. Um, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, like, I think that, like, Hex is doing a great thing in Australian MMA. Um they're honestly their main focus is just matching guys up who uh deserve to fight each other uh without any sort of politics or nothing like that involved it's just the two co top contenders are fighting each other and that's it and um there's no rubbish or nothing like that so i'm really like happy with what hex are doing um if you look at all the fights they're all very evenly matched always there's never you know complete mismatches and stuff like that so yeah, I, I'm really excited um, to be on the card. And yeah, that's a that's a huge fight also. So uh, I know that Joey Luciano has been fighting for a long time. He has a lot of experience. And um, Jono is coming up and he looked great in his last fight too. So, I mean, it, it's a similar situation to uh, me and Gauchi, you know. Um, both of those guys could be on the brink of something bigger also. So, um, yeah, it's just great to see, like, uh, people taking fights with the people they should, you know, and actually getting things done. Absolutely. And I think just to capitalize on what's been a phenomenal year for Australian MMA, more importantly, this year has been such a great year for Western Australia. I think specifically in a year where or in a country where we see oftentimes, you know, New South Wales or Queensland getting a lot of the recognition, Western Australia has really mm. put Australia on its back this year specifically. I think a lot of the credit that needs to be given to Australian MMA has to come to Western Australia, the often underlooked side of the scene. Because you look at the year that guys like Steve Ersek have had, you know, Jack Della Maddalena, Quillen Salkill headlining Eternal 80, you know, yourself who's fighting Sean Gauchi at Hex Fight Series 28, and then also a lot of other fighters like Abdullah Biata, and then you look at guys like guys like Moses Dang, Frank Jankowski, the list goes on and on of quality and high caliber fighters coming out of Western Australia. What does it mean for you to see the recognition, the love that Western Australia is getting, and more importantly, be able to be one of those big 
ambassadors and representatives of what the region brings to overall Australian MMA? Oh, it's awesome, man. Like, uh, prior to, you know, Della doing what, getting to the UFC and doing well, and, um, you know, Steve as well going to the UFC and doing well, it was all kind of like a bit of an illusion, you know, like we'd all be chasing, like, we're all chasing it to be like, I want to get to the UFC, but coming from Western Australia, like the sport's not very big here at all. It's it's a bit more, I don't know, Western Australia is a bit more barren compared to like Queensland and stuff. There's not much going on. It's a bit of a quieter city. Uh, oh, sorry, state. Um, and Perth in general is a bit of a, a quieter like city. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when we go to Melbourne, like when I go to Melbourne or the Eastern States, I'm always in shock. I'm like, far out. Like, wow, it's like you're in Vegas compared to Perth because Perth's so small, right? Um so yeah, it's always been a bit of a like, oh man, like it's always been such a big dream and it's always been so far-fetched. But then to see those guys come through and do it. And then like you look at someone like Steve Ersig, man, taking a two uh, fight on two weeks notice in the UFC and then just beating the top 10 guy. And you're just like, holy shit, like we have something here in Perth that's like, so great and it makes you realize that like even though you always believe in yourself it makes you realize that man like we can all do it and there's enough good to go around you know and i think in wa especially there's not much to do here so sports are quite big i mean there's not you know all the all the suburbs are quite far apart from one another so there's not many i mean if you want to go to like you know like a city it's you have to go to perth that's the only city there's no other cities you know so i grew up in the suburbs and there's not really anything to do other than train or try and pursue some sort of you know you either go into trade work or you go into sports or whatever so i mean i just think there's not much to do around here man so like yeah it's it's great to see people applying themselves and um yeah like we do have I think it's a hidden gem like Perth in general and Western Australia is a hidden gem. And I think in a few years to come, you'll, uh, you'll start to see like you even got guys fighting in one from Perth, like mini T fighting in one, fighting the best guys as well, not just the UFC, but other organizations too doing really well. So we have the talent, man. I just feel like people need to uh, like, you know, people scouting and stuff. I don't really know how it works, but they need to have a deeper look at things and just, yeah, to me, man, my goal, I just want to start getting, paid properly for my years of hard work you know that's it so that you know so that i don't have to work a, a regular job but that that's one of my main goals man i just want to start getting paid for paid for what i'm worth in, in a sense so yeah it's super exciting man i can't wait for what the next couple of years like have to hold yeah like what what's in store in the next couple of years absolutely i love what you mentioned i wanted to add on to that point that i feel like it's been decades and a culmination over the years of just hard work by the people and mixed martial artists based in Western Australia and Perth as a whole that have really set the tone and forefront to show that it is possible. It is possible to really yeah. be a great mixed martial artist and develop your skill set coming out of Perth. And you don't have to be based in New South Wales. You don't have to be based in Queensland. You don't have to be pay, play, uh, based in, I should say, Victoria. You know, you can really succeed anywhere. And you have guys that are living testaments and living proof of that. And more importantly, like you mentioned, in a, in a region and in a state that's so uh, dead set on sports and sports is one of the main driving factors, it's been amazing to see the quality gyms that have really come out of the re out of that area specifically. You look at Luis Store Combat Academy where you and Quillen Southfield are based out of, which I'll get into in just a moment, and also Scrappy MMA and Fitness, Wolves Den Perth, so many high caliber gyms that even now you think about it in 2023 as opposed to maybe 2017, 2018. Cross training's become mm. a real possibility just because of how much hard work people have put in and dedication people have put into the sport. And I agree with you on the sentiment that it's almost like now the only thing left to really get after is not the recognition because the recognition will come with the fights, but just that kind of monetary, uh, you know, re not reconciliation, but kind of um, reimbursement for the years of hard work that you guys have put in the sport. And I think you're on the cusp of that very well and very soon, you know. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned just wanting to get, you know, compensated in a sense for all the years of hard work. We really see the hard work come into full circle at Louis Stroh Combat Academy, a gym that, in my opinion, is going to be a staple of Australian MMA very soon. With you and Quillen Southkill at the forefront, two young guns 
really getting after it, setting a strong example, strong foundation alongside coach Romel Luistro, who does not get enough credit, in my opinion, for what he's accomplished. Talk to me just about being able to be a leader in the gym and also what it's been like to have Quillen by your side, uh, you know, a good friend of yours and just another great mixed martial artist getting after it the same way as yourself. Yeah, man, like I love our gym. Um, it's all love, you know. Uh, our coach does it out of the love of his heart, not to try and make money or anything like that. The gym's very small, very intimate. Um, and I'm used to that, you know. When I when I grew up training boxing and stuff like that, it was always in the back of a shed, you know. Like our gym could be related to something like that, you know. It's nothing fancy, but everyone in there uh, is equal. We're, everyone is treated the same. Uh, if you're a day one beginner, when you walk in the door, you're greeted the same just as, as if Quill walked in the door or someone like that. Um, yeah, Ramel does it all for the love of his heart. He just wants to train killers and build killers. And um, to be honest, man, he's doing a great job of it. And we have so many guys up and coming in the gym who and, – and they haven't even – some of them haven't even turned pro yet, but the the – they're so highly skilled even as an amateur i can't wait for them to go pro and and you know like before that uh, before i because i used to train somewhere else and i used to kind of box at what a boxing gym and then do kickboxing at a kickboxing gym jiu-jitsu at a jiu-jitsu gym da, 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 da. and i used to travel around to gyms and then just fight mma fights and think i was doing mma but until i really went to louis show combat academy which i believe was about four years ago or something like that i can't exactly remember um it, it was after my first pro fight and started actually training with those guys then i realized holy shit i actually know nothing about mma and uh, ramel like you said the credit's due man he has been he's been uh in the sport for so long uh trained under brian ebersol guys like that um yeah and he knows so much about mma he i think he's he started training when he was like 12 or something, kickboxing back in the UK, uh, came up training at Carlson Gracie in the UK. So he has like a great jujitsu background also. And then, um, yeah, man, just his knowledge, you know, um, yeah, all the guys in the gym. And, and, and now we even have uh, the Jones twins back too, you know, Dan and Luke Jones as well. So, I mean, when I was fighting amateurs, I was always looking up to those guys and and them guys are, are really exceptional also. So there's a lot of talent in the gym and it all just comes down to like hard work. Um, there's no bullshit. Uh, yeah, and, and, and it's a small gym and I think because it is small and so intimate and we just get in there and work hard, it only attracts a certain type of people because Ramel is not trying to make money or nothing like that. Um, it does only attract certain type of people that, that have heart because the truth is, man, the training we go through, most people would quit. Even I, I reckon some professional fighters even that um, go through our training would quit. Um, often you see guys come from like other gyms and, and do one of our sessions and they're looking at each other, what the fuck's going on? Like, I can't believe it. Like, yeah, so it's, it's definitely the hardest I've ever trained and um, it humbles you, you know? So yeah, I feel like our gym is definitely overlooked, but um, yeah, um, you know, people will start to see um, and they're already starting to see um, the potential and 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 uh, and how great it, it's going to be and the amount of quality fighters produced, not only now, but, you know, in two or three years from, from now, you'll start to see even more um, talent coming through the gym also. Yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, something that really stood out to me more importantly was, you know, you mentioned the intimacy of the gym. And I think that's a really important dynamic to have in a gym. Because Josh Kulaba, when I spoke to him, he said something that really stood out to me was when you're in these intimate gyms and you're in these small gyms where, you know, maybe there's one or two or three professionals and a lot of amateurs, you are setting up your future training partners. You are building something very special amidst your pursuit of greatness. And I think we really see that in Australia and the dynamic of these small gyms, despite maybe having one or two professionals, the quality of the gyms go up every day, day in and day out. And we really get to see that in the amateur scene. You know, it's hardly an amateur scene. It's like just a formality calling it an amateur circuit. But it really is a pro circuit away from the pro circuit. And you just see that level. You see that, you know, that improvement that the fighters make with each and every fight that they step into. And it's just that dynamic that I think Australian MMA has, which is really special and something to behold, is that amateurs and pros are almost like one. You really get to see yeah. that in Australia. Yeah, 100%, man. Um it's like I was talking to a mate of mine and we were just talking today. He trains at the gym too. And we were just saying like, he's an amateur there. And you know, like it, it's, it's so much harder. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, 
sorry, it's so much harder to stay to stay ahead than it is. Um, it's so much easier to catch up. You know what I mean? So when you're when you're say you're the more experienced guy in the gym, and when all um, a lot of the other guys are you know new and learning and stuff they have like great examples to follow and, and, and they, they get better so quickly because of the caliber they get to train with. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, it's so much, it's, it's so much harder to stay ahead than it is to catch up. It's so much easier to catch up when you're surrounded by that. So you're a hundred percent right with that. We have so many guys in the gym that, you know, even if you have a week off cause you get sick, you come back in the next week and someone who, you know, wasn't a very hard round is now like, holy shit, man, this guy's gotten real good, real quick, you know? And it's because that they've got those, those other guys to, to work with all the time. And like, like Kulabal said, you're, you're setting up your future of training partners, you know, it's not just guys like Quill in the gym and, you know, the Jones twins and the pros in the gym, but it's like, it's those amateurs, man, that you need. And they're not, like you said, you know, they're called amateurs because they're fighting amateur, but really they're, their skills are pro, you know? Um, but it's those guys that you need in the gym to be the training partners for guys like us as well, so that we can actually uh, prepare for fights correctly and stuff like that, you know? So they are super necessary. And in a, in a small gym where everyone is thriving to be an athlete, everyone who does, does that MMA class, every single one of them in the gym are doing it with the mindset of, I want to go somewhere with this. There's no one who's like, Oh, I'm just doing this for a bit of fitness, whatever. It's like, if you can't contribute, don't come. It's not the gym for you. Everyone here, we're all here to build each other up and, and, and serious guys only. I feel like if a gym gets too big, then you get to the point where, you know, a few people want to go and some people want to just keep fit. They like to mix it up, but they just want to keep fit and they don't, they come in and they get a workout in and they just, they don't, they're not contributing. Our gym is not to come and get a workout in. Hence, we, we do that anyway because of how hard it is. But everyone in the gym plays a key role and they all know their position in place and they, we all build each other up. And, and that's honestly what I love about uh, Luis Joe Combat Academy, man. Everyone there is adds some sort of value to each other, you know, and it's not one-sided. Not one person gets special attention. Everyone gets equal amount of attention. So it, it's a great gym, and I'm just I'm just glad that me and Ramo actually met each other and, 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 and I started training under him. Hey, I'm so grateful. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what, you know, what, where I would be without of meeting him, you know? So, you know, you need that. You need, you need um, coaches that really care about their fighters and, and want to put in all the work from the love of their heart, not because they're making money and stuff like this. So, you know. No, yeah, absolutely. I agree with all the points there. And more importantly, the idea of adding value, everyone adding value, whether it even be uh, through the fighting itself, I think it's just been amazing to see just different avenues that people add value to people. And just to piggyback to a point uh, you mentioned earlier about Western Australia, I feel like with you, Cody, something that really stands out to me is the message that you stand for. Because I always love to see fighters that go out of their way to set a strong example. And I really feel like we get that with you. Because, you know, you mentioned obviously the inspiration behind your own burger and just being able to set a strong example with that and have the proceeds go towards something you're really passionate about. I think taking that avenue and passion and something the amazing things that you built in mixed martial arts and translating it into different avenues, it's been remarkable to see. So I wanted to get your thoughts on just being able to use the platform that you've amassed for yourself in such a short time and that only continues to grow with more fights and just with getting your name out there, being able to use that platform as a vessel for good and what was the inspiration behind, you know, not only the burger, but also just the message behind it. Yeah, so I've um, I'm just like, to be honest, man. If you're a fighter, there's like one of two things: is like you you just love it, um, you know, you just love fighting and stuff. But a lot of fighters, um, I believe, get led into fighting because of hardship, you know. Because the truth is, is like in this day and age, you don't need to fight. Why else would you fight? You know, the only reason to do something like fighting, and I think even someone like Sean Strickland spoke very highly of this. He said, you know, without MMA, I'd be probably in jail or a drug addict or whatever, you know, and probably similar situation for myself too, growing up in, in a bit of hardship, you know? Um, so yeah, it's fighting saved my life in a sense. So you know, I'm just a big advocate for, you know, what, whatever avenue, whether it's fighting, whatever you need to take and, and just, you know, I'm, I'm using fighting as a tool to, to better off my situation, you know? So it, it's a tool for me to be able to, um, 
it, not not escape in a sense, but uh, do better for myself so that I'm I don't go through like I don't want my kids to have to go through financial hardship. I don't want them to have to go through struggles and and stuff like that. Uh, um, so yeah, for for fighting for me, it was like a tool to to do better for myself. So I'm just trying to encourage that with other people, whether it's through fighting or whatever. Um, but yeah, men's mental health in general is like a huge thing. And, and, you know, you'd think like, oh, in Australia, like, you know, it's first world country and stuff, but man, it's crazy to see some of the conditions and some things that go on here. Um, you know, I know in, in the U S you have a lot of like gun crime and gun violence and stuff like that, but man, we have some considering like you would think Australia, you know, first world, great countries, like we have some shit that goes down and some of the kids that are, that are brought up here they really, really have it hard, you know, whether they've been abused or, you know, whether they've been, um, you know, their parents have been on drugs or whatever, man, they've had, you know, um, hard upbringings, like, and, and you see them and they just brought up and, and they're, they're broken essentially, you know, so whatever I can do to try to give inspiration to these type of people, um, yeah, if I can lead by some sort of an example, that's what I want to do. Cause at one point in at one point I was that kid, you know? So yeah, just, just like having a dream and just, um, yeah, trying to do better off in your, in your, in with the cards you're dealt, right. We're not all fortunate enough to be, uh, born with, you know, given aces. So we have to try and do what we can to, to better our own lives, you know? So for me, that's what this has always been about, you know, to try and better off my own life. And, um, lucky I found fighting because I love fighting and I happen to naturally be quite good at fighting too. Um, but yeah, for whatever it is, man, I just want to try and um, help, you know, uh, I feel like I always say like, yeah, end the cycle, you know? So like whatever hardship you're going through, whether it was through your parents and probably their parents did it to them and their parents did it to them. At some point you got to break that cycle. Right. So I just want to uh, lead by example and try and inspire as many people as possible. I'm a beautiful answer, Cody. And I just think more importantly, the example that you've set with just being a, an ambassador for goodwill and somebody who's just really looking to set a strong example, strong foundation, and more like you said, break the cycle. You know, I think fighting as a whole is just a net positive upon people for the most part. Whenever you see people stepping into a gym, it really helps them tackle their inner demons and gives them control and discipline in other categories. And an and a evidence that I've seen through your personal experience, I wanted to kind of highlight was just the, you know, the diligence that you showed in the build up to the Roger Shippen fight, you went on Australian MMA with Mitch Tinley and you spoke with him about some of the hardships that fight week, but I feel like you were never deterred from making it to that end goal because of the discipline that you get as a fighter, you know, dealing with the rash on your body and, you know, just having those people around you, the discipline, the measure. I think if you were in that situation as an athlete in any other discipline, it would have been a possibly different outcome, you know, maybe angry, just different mindset, but you were very optimistic. You were very open-minded. You're like, okay, this is just another trial and tribulation. I got to get through this. And the fight spoke for itself because it was an all-time career performance. So I wanted to just highlight that as a, as a great example and also just highlight your skill set. Obviously, I think it takes a remarkable mixed martial artist to amass what you've amassed in such a short amount of time. But more importantly, the wins that you've accumulated over game opponents like Jarrett Wilbraham, Roger Shippen, and also just a great fight with Steve Ersek, that being the only blemish on your record, it's a hell of a blemish to have seeing what Steve has done. I wanted to get your thoughts just overall on the experience that you've garnered throughout this career, uh, throughout this career thus far, and what it means to you to have the respect of all your fellow peers and just be able to reflect on your record for a moment. Um, yeah, obviously I'm not done yet, and I'm my hardest critic. Critic, um, but yeah, I mean, I try not to like. Yeah, I. You know, like, especially the Raja fight, man, he's had so many fights. To be honest, I was so worried going in there. But the way I see it, man, is like, at the end of the day, my goal is to be the best and you got to take out the best. That's it, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I am I am truly grateful that my skills, like, my skills seem to be enough to win every time, which is, well, m most of the time, which is which is great, makes me feel good, makes me feel like I'm heading in the right direction, um, doing doing things right. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I mean, to me, man, I still, I'm grateful that people like you are recognizing my skills and ability and all the people around me. For But to be honest, man, even before I had all these fights and stuff, I always had people tell me like, man, you're gonna, you're gonna do it, dude. You're gonna do it. Don't worry. Like you're, 
I see your skills, your hard work, you're going to do it. You really are, you know, and people have always told me that even since I was a kid, you know, because of my dedication and even like growing up doing amateur boxing and stuff like that. Uh, people have always, always people around me have always been super supportive and always said, don't worry, one day you're going to, you're going to, um, you know, you're going to be a star and do all this sort of stuff. And I've always believed that, man. So um, even before I went pro and all these fights, I always, I always have been thinking that I'm going to do something spectacular one day. I've always had that. And that's all like, all these people have always known me for that as well. So when I fight, I fight with, not that the pressure affects me, but I, 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 I have to live up to that because that's all I, I know is that I feel like that's who I am, and I am, I am, I am here to to one day be a star and do something spectacular. And every time I fight, it's like I'm carrying all of them with me, and I'm I'm proving to everyone else who maybe didn't believe in me beforehand, make sure that now they do, you know. And um, I only need to impress a couple guys to get to the big show. So. I'm just going to continue doing that. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see where it leads. But yeah, I, I'm, man, to be honest, I feel like I'm ready for the big show already. It's just a matter of uh, you've got to keep proving yourself to everyone else so many time and time again, which I'll continue to do and I'll stay patient. And when the time's right, I'll get my call up, you know? Um, yeah, everything happens for a reason. And um, yeah, I just stay patient and keep hard working. It's not going to change just because I don't get the call up, like if I don't get the call up in two, three years time, it's not like I'm all, I'm going to stop, stop training and give up on it. All I know is fighting. So I'm just going to keep going and we'll see what happens, you know? So yeah, that's, that's the, the there's no other option for me. You know, I'm, I, my education isn't very high. I left school and, you know, year nine, I can't go to uni or nothing like that. I have to go back to school and finish year 12 or whatever it is. Now, I don't really want to work construction work. I hate that, you know. So this is the, uh, there's no there's no B plan. This is just A all the way, and that's it, you know. And I've had some terrible injuries that you know I, I've been thinking, fuck, like, am I ever going to be able to fight again with this type of injury? Is my ankle ever going to be right? There's some of the stuff that I've had, and yeah, I'm still here and I'm still going, and and it's not going to stop me from from doing what I can for as long as I can. So this is it you know this is my only my only shot my only opportunity and and there is no backup plan this is the plan <laughs> absolutely and i think i love what you mentioned with turning the the critics to fans and more importantly cody i want to thank you so much for your time and just for the mindset that you bring with yourself in the fight game i think that's something that needs to be applauded is the perspective that you have in such an early stage of your career and what's going to likely be a long career to say the least you know more importantly you know, we'll be seeing Cody Haddon for a very, very long time. And it all and it all continues, which uh, facing Sean Gauchi, obviously, November 18th, the next stepping stone of your career, the next pillar of your career and a fight that the a fight where the winner is going to get, you know, a lot more eyeballs on him than way before. I just wanted to ask you on a final note, is there any message you have to the fans of Cody Haddon at home and the supporters? Because I know that there's no shortage of the supporters for Cody Haddon. Yeah, I just want to say um, to all my sponsors, all my supporters, um, you know, very hard to do this and, and live this type of life. You know, you don't, you don't, uh, it's sometimes hard to even pay bills and stuff like that. Without you guys, none of this would be possible. So um, when I'm fighting, you're fighting too. So yeah, honestly, it, it means so much. And um, yeah, I, I, you honestly, as a fighter, you can't do it without the support. You can't do it without the sponsors. You can't do it without people looking after you you know so i'm just grateful for all the people i have around me and um yeah when i win we all win and and i hope everyone who supports me feels that you know because i definitely do so i i yeah i just when i just want us all to to win together and um yeah you know one day when i get to the to the big leagues as well i'm sure everyone can celebrate then when i win there as well and that's that's my only goal you know i just want to yeah, I want to I want to be on the world stage showing the world that what I can do, you know, as well, um, because I'm I, I know my ability and I know I can hang in there with those guys it's just a matter of time. But, yeah, I'm not looking past that. But now I know, Sean, I got a very hard fight up and coming. Um, it is going to be a war. Uh, no doubt about that. Um, and yeah, that's going to be it's going to be a dog fight in the end of it. Um, but yeah, may the mess may the best man win. And um, yeah, they're just pray that you know come out of there all healthy and yeah that's it absolutely and you guys heard it here first you guys already know that cody Haddon versus sean gauchi is going to be fight of the year in australia i have no doubt in my mind saying that because i know what these two gentlemen bring and if you guys want to check out that fight 
do be sure to go check out Hex Fight Series 28, November 18th. I'm going to be linking in the description. Guys, this isn't even an ad. I'm going to be keeping a buck 50. I live all the way across the globe. I watch Australian MMA because I love it. No bullshit, no nonsense. This isn't an ad. This is just real hardcore stone cold truth. Cody Haddon versus Sean Gauchi is going to be fight of the year. You heard it here first, without a doubt in my mind. Go check it out. Support your local fighter. Cody, thank you so much for your time. It's been an honor and privilege to speak with you, sir. You know, I look forward to watching your career unfold as you continue to do amazing feats, both inside and outside the octagon. So thank you so much for your time. To the fans at home watching, check out Cody Haddon on social media in the description down below. It's been me, Dan, from Fight Wave, guys. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this interview. Do be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and have a great day, guys.